Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on the Network Live on Facebook. I am April Garner, the founder of the network, and we've got a really exciting show today. I'm so glad that all of you have chosen to tune in with us. I have to, uh, of course, start by uh, introducing the co-hostess with the mostest, yeah. Claudine Lance. Not even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Claudine Lance Gofield, thank you so much for, for helping me out with this today. We know that you are the, uh, the, the I don't know what to call you, but it comes out of I'm just a little so country girl. You know how to do it. Me. I'm a country girl that is just trying to make a difference like you. I'm, I'm honored to be here, April. I really am. I'm honored to have you. I was like, what am I, who, who can I ask to be a part of this particular event? who would know how to help me get what I need out of these teens. And it was like, Claudia Lance Schofield, that's your girl. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. so, yeah, so today we are talking to teens about uh, this COVID-19 crisis and the impact it has had uh, on their lives, particularly on education and as far as their socialization. And uh, we have a host of teens who are joining us today. It, it's, this is going to be a one incredible show. Uh, this is the first set of teens that you will see during this live broadcast. And we have a second set that we will add at around mm, uh, maybe around six o'clock ish or so. Uh, but before we get started with the discussion, I'm going to allow each of the uh, guests to actually introduce themselves. So why don't we start with Miss Trinity Jacobs? Hello, everybody. I'm Trinity Jacobs from Morris High School. Whoever wants to go next is fine. Bobby, I, go Bobby. I go to Winthrop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby goes to Winthrop. Okay. Sean Ye. I'm, I'm Sean Ye, and I attend the eighth year. Okay. And last but not least, um, Tia, and I go to early college. All right. Awesome. So uh, we have a little mix here with uh, high school, early college, who and our early college student Tia is also working on uh, her degree at Ori Georgetown Tech at the same time. So that's incredible. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's wonderful that we have such an array of students who can share their mm -hmm. thoughts and feelings about what's going on. So I'm going to let Claudine kind of kick it off and we're going to do what we always do, which is to uh, moderate the discussion. If you have any comments or questions or, you know, just even words of encouragement for our guests, please post them in the comments and we will share uh, these thoughts with our special guests. So, uh, Claudia, you want to kick it off for us? Sure, absolutely. So I think I was just sitting here thinking about the fact that um, y'all have been through a lot. And, and I know we don't have insensitive people, but I know for me, initially, I didn't realize that COVID-19 coronavirus was going to be what it is now. And, and, and now we're dealing with the new world. And so I think I'm going to begin with you, Tia. I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, when you heard COVID-19, coronavirus, um, and the initial thought, I mean, did you think that it would ever lead into us actually uh, canceling school for like the remaining of the school year, being quarantined, uh, unfortunately, knowing about people that are losing their lives? For you, what was your initial thought when you heard about COVID-19, coronavirus? Uh, my initial thought, I didn't think it was going to be as bad as it is because I because if you look on the news, people weren't like taking it seriously. There's like no big actions for it when it first um, happened. And I was kind of thinking like, I don't want to compare it to Ebola or nothing like that. But you, can. you know how yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. the Ebola crisis that happened, it was like, yeah, it happened. But it like very few people got it. It was handled, controlled. Like it didn't really affect that many people. I think it was like nine cases in the United States. And so I wasn't really thinking that big much of it until then, you know, they started canceling school and stuff. And I was right. like, that's when it got no. real. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm gonna put Trinity on the spot. Trinity, your thoughts. What was your initial reaction or uh, just like, uh, uh, did you think this was going to lead into the fact that now our lives have been totally changed and we're dealing with uh, something we consider now as a new norm? I didn't think it would go this far. I thought it was something that was just going to go by quickly and we would get back in school and everything and everybody would be okay. Okay. What about you, Bobby? Uh, I was surprised. I think the same amount as everybody, but 
also annoyed because we, I don't think it could have gotten as bad if the government had taken actions before they did, but here we are. Right, All here of we us are. back at home. Okay. And I, yeah, and, I, and I, I think that's what's really real, Bobby, is that uh, we have to be mindful of the fact that just because you are young people, it does not mean you're not connected to what's going on in the world, local, state, and 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 national um, issues, leadership. You know, you're looking at everything. So, um, you know, it makes sense that you feel that way. And mm -hmm. no, one, no one is saying that it's wrong for you to feel that way at all. It's just that um, that's what's really real. And I think people need to understand that. Yeah, even the young people are paying attention to what's going yeah. on. Because it's absolutely just altered their lives totally. And mm -hmm. I think for young people, I think that the thing that's really getting y'all is the socialization piece. You know, the interaction. A lot, some of y'all thought you didn't thought you really didn't like school, but now don't you realize how much you really miss school? <laughs> I, I, I really miss school. I miss she school. Like, <laughs> Are you still miss school, Tia? You don't miss school, Tia? I mean, I feel like I don't know. <laughs> I do because for the fact that. I'm technically a full-time college student now right. and baking and pastries specifically, it's a lot harder to learn stuff. I noticed that I'm not learning anything. I'm kind of just submitting everything by due date. I don't, mm. I'm wow, just cruising through. <laughs> so you do this. So peace. Mm -hmm. missing. Okay. Shania, yeah. what, what's your thought on that? Yeah. <laughs> I do because for the fact that I'm a full-time college student. Shania, you got to unmute your bike. Okay. okay. Um, well, for me, I didn't think it was like anything that was serious until I guess you can see like more people and more people, families were getting affected. Like people were out of jobs, people were losing money. And now we have people sick <clears throat> and like there were no ventilators in New York. And there's so many things and officers got we're facing that people don't know how we're going to get through them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, there's a question that's come up in the comments and anybody can answer it as far as um, our guests are concerned. Uh, has this health crisis stimulated any of you to pursue a career in medicine or the healthcare field? Um, for me, I would say I already participate in um, the nursing field at um, the ATA. So I guess it's something more of like in encouragement to see that healthcare workers are always going to be needed and especially around this time like they're very useful mm -hmm. so I guess it's encouraged me more to like continue my study into it because it's always going to be and it's always a job that you know that you're going to have mm -hmm. so it's not like a career that just all of a sudden just going to go away or that's not or it's going to be a degree that's not useful for you right and that's true Absolutely. Bobby, you gonna, yeah Bobby you were going to chime in um I would say this is push me even farther away from the medical field because I can't imagine the stress that mm. healthcare professionals are going through. I wouldn't want to be a part of that. Like, wow. So did you all. consider the healthcare field at one point and then you change your mind because of the pandemic? I only consider the healthcare field very briefly just mm -hmm. because, you know, people say you should go into the healthcare field. But not for me. Right. And, and, and I think and, yeah. I, that's understandable because, I mean, you, you want to make sure that you're in a field where you can thrive and be productive and uh, effective at what you do. And a lot of it is tied to personality, it's tied to interest, it's tied to a number of things. So, if, if like you're saying, if you're processing it as this is way too much stress for me, then you've already realized that, yeah, this isn't a field that you need to enter because you're always going to have that stress. And, um, you know, even in the uh, probably I can imagine just from observation uh, when uh, family members were in the, hospitalized and being there and watching the, the medical professionals do what they do, even when it's not like an emergent situation, you know, going on at that moment, still there's a level of stress because you're in a, a, a patient care capacity and you always want to make sure that your patients are getting what they need and that they're stabilized and that they're actually healing. So, um, you know, from the standpoint of someone who's in career services, I think it's good that you're taking inventory of these types of things to figure out whether or not it's something you want to do. And Shania, I have to commend you for 
are already choosing that career path because now you get to see exactly what it's like uh, and you're getting one of the greatest lessons you could ever get. Hopefully um, there won't be too many more of these pandemics in your lifetime, right. but now you know what you are, uh, what you signed up for and you still want to be in the nursing field. So, yeah. you know, that's awesome. That's really I think awesome. anybody in the, in the healthcare field, absolutely superheroes. Um, I think it's a call in. I mean, just mm -hmm. like uh, Bobby said, I mean, the stress that goes along and then unfortunately, maybe even witnessing a loss of somebody that they actually know. So, mm -hmm. um, again, it, it's definitely an opportunity to make that decision. And I mean, you can't. That's that's Bobby's decision. And then Shani, on the other hand, this is her motivation. So that's right. You know, we see things differently. Got the best of both worlds. We've got, yeah, we've got both sides of the spectrum on mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that's right. So um, Bobby kind of touched on it a little bit that as far as this next question is concerned. How do you all think our local, state, and national leaders are handling the situation? And if you were one of our leaders, how would you handle it? Anybody can chime in. Um, honestly, I think they're doing a pretty good job. I know a lot of people are saying negative things about how the government is handling like everything, but they're creating new laws and like statements and people are getting money when they need money. All the unemployment checks are rolling out. All of the small business loans are rolling out pretty quickly. Although we are still, education is struggling, but we're still getting an education, even if it's different. Like we were able to come up with the idea for online and homeschooling extremely quickly considering the circumstances mm -hmm. anyone else have any thoughts do you think our leaders are doing a good job are they handling the situation Shania's like yes i have one <laughs> <laughs> go ahead mm -hmm. um, i think some state like the governors i think some of them are doing like very fantastic and i think others of them may not be like i think um, Governor Cuomo in, in New York, he's doing a fantastic job, but I think that some governors are kind of just in a rush to like reopen, and sometimes I don't think they're considering the health of the public. I mean, we want everything to reopen, like I mean, uh, everyone, because I don't think anyone likes being stuck at home all day. But I also think it's very important because when you're you're not putting yourself at risk, you're putting everyone at risk in the outside world, beyond you, beyond your family. That's other people's family, so you always have to be considerate of, of other people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anybody else have any thoughts on this question? Yes, go ahead, Tia. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there you go. Are you still muted for some reason, Tia? Try it again. Trinity, do you have any thoughts? If you were a leader, what would what would you do? Would you handle it the same way while we're waiting on Tia to get her sound together? Besides opening finger everything up, they're doing good to me. I wouldn't open anything up until I feel well, like everything is dying down. Um, I feel like in the beginning when like this first came out, I feel like we could have. Uh, who's speaking? Oh. I don't know who they, was that you? Maybe it's Tia's sound trying to catch up with the feed. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so Tia mute for just a second so Trinity can finish saying what she's saying. If you don't mind? Okay, go ahead, Trinity. I think they're handling everything pretty good besides opening up beaches and stuff. I would have not opened up the beaches until everything has died down. Because even though you're not that close, it can still spread. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So T, you want to try it again to see whether or not you can get your point across? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, your sound is still not working for some for some reason, Tia. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna come back to Tia. Yeah, we'll come back to you. And, and, we'll and so you. we talked a little bit about um, so so I want to talk about your generation and people, your peers. You mentioned something about Trinity, the fact that you're not in favor of like the large crowds or even open backing up the, the, the country, open back up the states. And so do you believe, I mean, a lot of times I really don't like going in the stores. I just Ask my husband to go in and I really wear my mask. But do you believe your peers are taking this really serious? And do you believe they know how it, it before, you know, how even more 
damages could be done if people don't do what they need to do? Do you honestly believe? And I want to hear from everybody. Do you believe that this is something that has really gotten your peers' attention and they absolutely uh, want to make sure they do what needs to be done to, so we can be rid of this thing? I think that some of them still aren't paying attention and they're not tuning into the news. Like I know that I've gotten to watch the news more now because of this. And I'm very cautious when I go out, but I still see some of my peers go out not being cautious at all. Like they're not taking it serious. Okay. Bobby, you want to chime in on that? Um, I would agree with Trinity. There are, there are definitely people who are paying more attention to like the news and stuff, but I think not like the majority, but close to the majority still don't care or like aren't paying attention, aren't taking into account like what is the needs of others in this time. Like I still do have friends that are like trying to hang out and I'm like, no. <laughs> right. yeah. like, it's That's not a good happen. answer. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Exactly. Yeah. So kind of, sort of, we're all different. Right, right, right. I definitely agree with that. All right, Shania, what's your take on that, darling? I don't think they're taking it serious at all because like the stuff that I see, on social media, everyone's like basically just continuing with, with everyday life, and they if they want to do something, they're going to do it. Like people have been in large crowds, just like not following everything. I just think that some of us, I mean, they just don't see how serious it is because I don't think it affects them to a way that they can understand. They don't have the ability to understand until something happens to them or their family member. Then they'll be like, "This is something that's really serious." But as of right now, they're not really care and they're like oh we're out of school you know this is great we're gonna do what we feel like so i don't really think they are taking that serious as they should wow and i think you know april i think we would agree that it hits a little bit different when you could put faces to the people that are losing their lives to this thing yeah you know, and then just this morning i think or yesterday a 17 year old from lancaster south carolina lost her mm -hmm. life and mm -hmm. so it's like no discrimination is going on here. You know, this virus is uh, definitely deadly. And mm -hmm. so um, I think you have impact. You have influence with your peers. And so I think you have to set the standards. Like Bobby said, somebody asked me to go to a cookout. It's not. No, it's absolutely not. Because mm -hmm. you got to consider the fact that if you go and somebody's affected, then you could take that back to your entire family. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that we have to. So I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, you have a voice as young people and you're willing to make sure that you take a stand. And if you take a stand, you can influence your friends and your parents to do that as well. So that's a that's beautiful true. thing. That's true. Um, someone commented that they think that it's uh, more rural versus metro, oh. uh, you know, and that more the, the metro people are staying in. Why, why do you think there's so much pushback? Uh, as far as the guidelines are concerned. I mean, what are your peers saying? I know you said that they maybe they don't really believe that it can happen to them, but I mean, is that all you're hearing or did it just, what What could it be? Because it doesn't, uh, that's much better to you. Um, it, uh, that, that is an interesting observation that it's rural versus metro. So why do y'all think that is? Or that seems to be the perception. Meaning people in the city are doing it more so than folks in, you know, country, country areas or, country. yeah, yeah. Why do you think that's happening? For metro areas, the spread is much quicker. And so I think it's much more serious for people who are in urban or cities. Um, but I think for rural people, they're like, my nearest neighbor is already like 20 meters down the road. What is, what's mm -hmm. gonna happen if I go outside? Mm -hmm. Or like yeah. not even to that effect, it's just, I think if you're like in a more rural area, you just don't see, because you don't see as many people around, you just don't think that it can spread, mm -hmm. but it still can. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's an interesting perspective. Someone asked, uh, when you see your friends not wearing masks, does it make you feel uncomfortable? And are you wearing masks? Right. Who wants to answer? Anybody want to answer that question? That means they're not wearing masks. Got <laughs> How many of you wearing masks? Raise your hands. <laughs> right. Okay. 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 All right. So, 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 so half the panel is wearing, wearing masks. Mask. So, 
Why, why is the other half not wearing a mask? I don't wear a mask because I don't, I haven't left my house. Oh, but wow. <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing. Bobby's like, she's not playing with it. She's just staying inside. Yeah. So yeah. you go to I've like- I left my house. I just don't have a mask. Yeah. Okay. okay. My okay. friend is making me one, but still, like, I just don't have one. That, but do you know the importance place. of wearing the mask, though? So if you would yes. go in the public yes. place, okay, that's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tia? Uh, yeah, Tia. We need to get yeah. back to Tia for a couple of reasons. Right. But answer this one first. <laughs> this <laughs> is much better. Answer this question. For a little bit. She was <laughs> MIA. You got missing for a bit, Tia, so we're going to come to you for it. <laughs> um, so I understand the importance of wearing a mask, but also, I don't leave my house. So, cause I don't want to take that risk. And if I do leave my house, I, I, I keep my distance anyways, but I rarely leave the house um, unless it's like to walk my dog. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that because your parents won't let you leave or is it because you don't want to leave? Cause parents ain't taking no chance on this thing. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's it's be honest. both. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I didn't really leave my house before Corona. <laughs> oh, okay. But gotcha. now, because my mom leaves the house because with her job and everything, she leaves the house more often. And so if she's leaving the house and then I'm leaving the house and Bob's leaving the house, then it's more likely that everybody's going to get it. Rather, mm -hmm. if she just leaves the house and gets whatever we need, then it's less likely for us to get sick with anything. Gotcha. That makes All sense. Right. Wow. Okay, so let's let's lean on this um, the question about the virtual learning environment. I know that uh, earlier we kind of touched upon it, and um, I think Tia said that she feels like she's not really learning anything. She's just kind of you know making the work happen and submitting it, but no one's really coaching you or guiding you or whatever as far as what you typically get in the uh, classroom. So, um, how have the rest of you adjusted to this virtual learning environment? What do you, what are you doing as far as your routines? Uh, you know, is, are, are there any major challenges now that you have to do everything online? Who wants to answer that? Trinity? Oh, Shanye? Okay. Um, I think there's definitely an adjustment because when you're in school and it's like the learning and people are teaching, it's very different. I mean, our teachers in our, you know, everyone is trying their best, like to help us to make us understand but like just doing it like going to school for so many years and then it's like all of a sudden like you just have to change everything is definitely something that's very much so serious and different like you have to wake up set your own schedule make sure that you're getting everything done like by yourself like not really with people telling you like oh this is like you have this due like they can't really like, you know you don't go to school five days a week to see them every single day right mm -hmm. and like they can't teach you they can't like really guide you and how you are used to and how they would want to do so so I think it's different for us and for the teachers, for everyone, because it's different because it's something that's never had been done before. Okay. All right. Uh, Trinity. Okay. So for some students, I know it's been a big challenge, but for me, it's not, it hasn't been a big challenge. Um, everything is going fine. Like the only thing that's ha been happening is that we've been having to cancel our virtual meetings with our teachers because either mics aren't working or internet is slowing down. But other than that, everything is going great. They tell us when our work is due and they give us due dates, of course. And everything is like put out by step. So it's not really bad, but I would prefer being in school. Mm -hmm. uh, T, you have any thoughts on the, the virtual learning environment piece? Um, I feel like, well, cause I'm technically, I'm not in high school, so I'm only in my baking classes now. Mm -hmm. And so it's a definitely a challenge, but luckily like my professor, like Chef Blunt and all of them, they've really made it, they've tried their best to make it the best experience that we can. And they've done a really great job with it. We have, um, Facebook, he goes on Facebook live and does classes on Facebook live, things like that. But I feel like it's difficult because for somebody like me, I'm not a virtual person. I know if people think, oh, you're young, you like technology, this, that, and the third. But I am i can't learn online. I have to be in person to learn things. And mm -hmm. so it's um pretty difficult for the fact that I can't physically see. I can't be with you. I can't look and see what the dough is supposed to look like um, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, someone is asking, uh, well, before I get to that, let me ask this question as it pertains to education as well. Uh, so you've touched upon something about learning styles <clears throat> and how, you know, like your way of learning is probably, you know, different from anyone else uh, who's on the panel. What can, what do you want teachers to know as far as uh, the, the support that you need, and even the administrators, if there are any administrators who are watching this, what are some things that you all uh, would like to have so that this learning process is a little bit uh, smoother for you? Any thoughts? Seems like this oh, panel is pretty means, much all means, <laughs> You know what? That means that they probably getting what they need, uh, the needs are being met, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty much in terms of, because the Google Meet, and that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit, do y'all really think it's necessary? And I, I believe that parents should encourage their young people to participate in Google Meet and the virtual uh, classrooms. Do y'all believe that's necessary in order to make sure that you stay abreast of what's going on? Okay, Shai, sure Shai, Shai. Um, I really think it depends on the subject. Okay. Like if you're like if you're doing math, um. I kind of feel like the meets for, for me is very important. Like you can't just learn math by just looking at this and kind of teaching yourself. Or I'm, I guess it really depends on the subject. Like there are some subjects that are like easier and they're like, okay, they can post notes and that you like right away it clicks that you understand. But then there's other of them that you really will like need more explanation of them. So that's when you probably need to participate in the Google Meet is what you're saying. OK, but but do you think it's really cool to be able to go to the Google Meet? And so you miss in your peers and then a lot of y'all are missing your teachers. At least it gives you a visual uh, with the virtual uh, classrooms, uh, gives you a visual of what's going on. Is that pretty important to y'all or it doesn't really matter? OK, go ahead. Nice on you. Um, this I think it's important because you get to see that everyone's OK and that everyone's fine. And I mean, we're like, I mean, some teachers like, you know, you have a close bond with. So I, th I think it's, it's important to see them and, you know, to still have that connection and know that you can talk to them and that they're going to help you. So I think that's very important. Okay. Yeah, Bobby, you I, were I, say something? Go ahead. Um, in regards to, like, are Google meetings necessary and such, I would say anybody that I'm, like, going to miss during this time, I already have in my phone. So I don't <laughs> think it's, like, necessary right. for that point. If like I'm missing somebody, I'm just gonna text them or call them. But for learning purposes, I think the Google meetings are extremely important, especially for younger people who mm -hmm. don't really have like the discipline necessary to control their own schedules and like teach themselves the topic. Because I've done online schooling for mo many years. So like I already, I know how it goes. I can set up my own like schedule and routine and such. But right. specifically for like younger people, the Google meetings are necessary because without a teacher telling them that you need to learn this, this, and this in order to do this, this, and this, they're not going to do it themselves. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then I just want to say major shout out to the teachers because the mm -hmm. teachers are accessible. I mean, the teachers make themselves, they avail themselves, they're accessible. And if you have any problems, you can email them, you get response. And so although we're not physically in the building, we're still working. Just like exactly. you are April from home, I'm telling you. And, mm -hmm. and we, I, you know, I'm telling y'all, I don't speak for Oregon County Schools, but I will tell you, we miss being at school. I miss the interaction with the students. Yeah. I'm telling you, I never thought I would be so ready to get back in the, the flow of things. And I know this is the new norm, but I'm like, God, I'm praying hard for us to be able to go back to our normalcy, which it won't ever be like it was before. But mm -hmm. I really, really believe that um, the teachers are, we're struggling. You know, we're really struggling as well. And so anything that students need, we avail ourselves and we make ourselves definitely make ourselves accessible. Mm -hmm. and, and interpersonal relationships are just so important. And, uh, you know, that's just a, that's another side of learning. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that uh, some people are able to adjust and also, uh, you know, based upon what we talked about earlier, when it comes down to personalities, some students, you know, they've never uh, really had a need for a lot of interpersonal relationships. So, you know, being in this type of isolation, so to say, it doesn't bother them as much. But when you have people who thrive because of those interpersonal relationships, yeah. you know, that it's it's difficult to even concentrate because you need that extra piece of nurturing 
Uh, and so, um, you know, and it brings me to two questions that have come up in the comments. Uh, one person is asking, one viewer, uh, are you experiencing any depression due to uh, staying at home all the time? Any anxieties about going out in public? You know, what are you what are you feeling when it comes to this um, dealing with the coping with uh, COVID-19? As far as that piece. Yes, Shanye. I think the more is it's more like of anxiety and anxious because like we're not we're unsure of what's really going to happen. Like every day that goes by, it's just like we're just it's kind of just like we're flowing through life and just whatever comes we have to deal with. Because mm -hmm. like there's so many uncertainties right now, so I think that's very much just gives me like I'm very anxious. And then when you're going out, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if these people are sick. Like you don't know anything, so it's like you're always got to be very cautious. And I think it's ca causing me anxiety. Okay, yeah. Well, I have anxiety going to the store as well, but right. I, you know, so it's affecting more than just the students, you know. What exactly. I'm saying? Uh, that is, feeling that it too. Not, I think adults were experiencing the same thing. It's same just, thing. Anybody else want to chime in on that that topic as far as depression, anxiety, any, you know. Okay. Uh someone else also uh, someone else asked, for those of you who have younger siblings, do you feel pressure um to to help them with their schoolwork? Is there a, a you know requirement or a need to do that in your homes? Okay, Bobby. Um, I have two younger siblings. One of them is Tia, and the other. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and the other, he's in eighth grade. I haven't felt any sort of pressure to help either of them. Um, I think not in like a mean way that it's every man for themselves. But you meant that. I don't know. You have to learn. <laughs> you have to learn to you by yourself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> trying to, you trying to like, yeah, you meant that, but I'm playing. Tia, I'm can you right. handle that? She said, she said, you pretty much every man for themselves. Is that good with you? Tia. Tia She's Tia? like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, I mean, I, if I need help, then I, I know that I can go to Bobby because right. she will. Like if like my essay that I had to write, she helped me with that. I got ninety eight. Thank goodness. Okay. Um, All right. High five. Feel high five. Like, <laughs> awesome. Um, mm -hmm. but I feel like uh, with my younger brother, I feel like he hasn't come to me for help. So I feel like plus my mom and my dad are like helping him out if he needs help with any of his mm -hmm. classes. But other than that, like he's done virtual school before. And so he's mm -hmm. kind of like comfortable with doing the whole virtual thing. And so I've never, I haven't had a need to help anybody yet. <laughs> oh, that's and, good. And do you even feel the, um, the, but do you feel the need to reach out to him? Because sometimes people don't know how to ask for help. Right. Have you asked him if he needs some help or wants some help from you? I haven't asked him. Because, I mean, we're all living in the same house. There's not something that's like a secret around here. <laughs> if, <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, so don't come for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Because right. like I said, some people don't know how to ask for help. Right. Yeah. Bobby, he yeah. probably needs your help. I'm going to need for you yeah. to ask him, okay? Yeah, just ask, just ask him every now and but, again. But you, I, want to, I want to talk about something real quick before we bring the second group in April. Um, we were talking about um, the fact that people are going through emotionally through a lot of different emotions. And so I want to ask the group, what is therapeutic for you? Like some people that's going out in the morning, walking or mm -hmm. walking in the afternoon, or maybe just sitting on the front porch or just maybe being able to listen to music. What has been that thing that causes you not to feel overwhelmed because all mm -hmm. this going on with this pandemic, we could, we let's admit it's, it becomes overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to Trinity first because you hadn't said nothing in a while, Trinity. What's your take mm -hmm. on that? Honey? I have to say that um, I know a lot of young people use TikTok. So that and listening to music really helps. Okay. I want to be in a TikTok. Call at me, okay? <laughs> that would be hilarious. I have no children in here, so nobody asked me. I want to be in your TikTok, Trinity. Can I be in your TikTok? Okay, keep it clean now. Okay, well, what's your take on that? Uh, let's go to Tia. What is therapeutic? What helps you to get through this pandemic or helping you to get through? 
Um, I have spent many, many, many hours on TikTok, <laughs> just scrolling. <laughs> um, also, food, food makes me happy. Me That's too. really it. That's what it, my days consist of. <laughs> It's just Bobby? scrolling through TikTok and Snapchat. Okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. Uh, when in doubt, dance it out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Music dancing. Yes. Yeah. So you do a lot of dancing. Yes. So. Okay. All right. So she's gonna include me in her TikTok. Me and April going. We about to be in these TikTok. Yeah, we gonna have to get one. Yeah. Y'all have to work yeah. with us. It's gonna take us a couple Please, hours to get it now. Exactly. I promise you. I, I, that's what you right there come out. All right, what, what about you, Shania? What is your therapeutic thing that you do to help keep your mind off of this pandemic? Well, for me, I'm still working. So okay. I'm going to work five days out the week. But I guess other than mm. that, like the most time that I really have is to like do schoolwork. So I guess doing that and listening to music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys have found a way to, to you know, create some balance and, um, you know, to, uh, I guess, create some outlets yeah. so that you aren't so consumed by everything that's going on. I, have, I haven't heard you all talk about, uh, you know, tuning into news all the time or following things in news feeds. You really are trying to, um, you know, get away from it all. And that's fine because it's quite an adjustment. Everybody's mm -hmm. trying to adapt. Uh, you know, someone, uh, one of the uh, viewers commented, everyone just breathe. And that's what everyone needs to do that's is you know, breathe, take, take a moose off for just a second, in and out. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then you can, you know, hold on to your sanity. Uh, I know that we're getting uh, into the second group's time. And, and this is such a great conversation. Uh, we couldn't possibly cover all of the questions that we have. But I do want to get into some things that will kind of wrap up. The session and then what we're going to do for our viewers uh we have a um uh, uh we have some special guests the uh ceos the owners of the dream of apparel we'll talk a little bit about their line in just a moment and then we will bring on the second group uh so what are your for the panelists what are your concerns for the future and what do you if what do you want uh teachers parents school administrators, your friends, your family, what do you want them to know about your perspective on what's happening and how it's affecting you? So concerns for the future and what are your final words on how it's affecting you? Anyone can start. Okay, I think Bob, yeah, Shania, go ahead. We'll, we'll go around the clock, okay? You're on mute, Shania. I think for the future, I just hope that we get it figured out. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's in the unknown right now. So no one's really sure what's really going to happen because we're still, you know, facing this pandemic and we're still going through it in everyday struggles of being on quarantine. But I think just for the teachers, I think I personally want them to know is I think that they're doing amazing. Like they're trying to help us. Everyone's trying to adjust. And I think for everyone, I just think that we're all going to be able to get through it. Like wow. when we get through it, we will say that. You know, we've been through something and it made us stronger because we've had to do something that we never would have thought that would have we've had to do. Amen. Okay, feel that virtual hug, girl. Wow. I know that's right. I wish oh. I could. Uh, 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 Wakanda, Wakanda salute. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Wow. That encouraged me, Shania. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Trinity. Um, for the future, it just makes some seniors, you know, like me, are we going to be able to have our first years of our first year of college? Are we going to be able to experience it on campus or off, which um, it wouldn't really matter to me because I don't want to get sick or anything. So I'm concerned, but then I'm not because I know that we're all going to get through this and for the teachers and out there. We just thank you for just continue to, continually educating us and helping us transition from the regular school to virtual school. And for the kids, just keep on pushing. Like, don't stop yourself from doing what you want to do because of this. And for the parents, just continue to help your kids get through this and help them learn what you can. And if you can't do it, just help them email their teacher so they know what they're doing. Awesome advice. I know that's right. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Bye. Chills. Yes. 
That's why she's Miss Laura's High, by the way. Oh, Trinity's Miss Laura's High. Trinity's Miss Laura's High. Trinity, high high five and high five, girl. That's (laughs) awesome. Beautiful and smart. Yeah, smart. Okay, Trinity. Yeah. Bobby, before you answer, Trinity, how old are you? I'm 18. All right. And Shanye, how old are you? I'm 17. Okay, so I just I want y'all to put this in perspective as far as the the youth that's in the room, their ages, and and this type of um, mindset that they have. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful, Bobby. Um, for the future, I I've, I've heard rumors that we're still going to be online, like in the new school year, and I really, really, really don't want that to happen. This is difficult for everyone involved, but it's almost over. I can only hope. And for like, and I don't know, I want students and like kids to realize they think that this is gonna go on forever, but it's not. Like this isn't the end of the world. It feels like it, but it isn't. (laughs) And we're gonna be okay. And that's a rumor. We'll be back at school, girl. I'm hoping. Let's pray. Keep praying yeah. now. You know. I'll keep praying. That's right. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Right. That's right. Got to keep hope alive. You get yes. look. Yeah, that's right. She gets a salute. Girl, she gets a salute. Yeah, she gets a salute. Okay, Tia. Tia's like, oh, y'all want me to talk? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so for the future, I could only hope that we go back to, I know we're not going to go back to the way it was obviously, because people are going to be way more cautious about everything. Um, But I'm hoping that we can kind of have some go back to some routine that we did and not be as stressed as we everybody is now. And for businesses to open back up when everything is like safe and stuff, because I know I've been out of work for four weeks now and I have another four weeks to go and I haven't gotten unemployment. So I don't have any money. (laughs) But I just hope that for the future that everything just like kind of goes back to the way it was. Obviously, it's not going to be fully. And I just want everybody to realize the seriousness in the situation. I know I had a debate with one of my friends because they said that Corona was just a made up disease. It wasn't real. And I was just like, okay. (laughs) And I want everybody just to get off the beach, please. Please don't Mm -hmm. go to the beach. (laughs) Um, I heard that. Because y'all hope. are having bonfires. Right. I don't know why you're having Stop bonfires. Stop it. Take a knee. Just go ahead and take a knee. We got to get this, you know. I'm like, wow. people need to realize that if you just stay home, that this could be over quicker. But That's everybody's right. having parties every weekend for whatever reason. And you know but, what, April? They should yeah, take heed to this because they're hearing it from the young people. You know? <laughs> so this is the reason to take heed. If the young right. people feel this way, then y'all need to stay home. Mm-hmm. Just stay y'all home. It's necessary. Exactly. Well, listen, um, it has been a pleasure talking to all of you. Uh, you, you kicked off our uh, discussion with our, our young people. Uh, and I asked them, and I was like, should I call y'all young people? Are you youth? Are you, are you young folks? Young adults, are, you maybe. are you young adults? What are you? And, um, you know, but you all are obviously talented young individuals mm-hmm. who, um, are, you know, you're very capable of thinking through what's going on. You're very aware. And, you know, on behalf of the network, we congratulate all of you That's for right. appearing and just doing what you what you're doing to just try to maintain, just hold it in the road. Um, yes. You know, like uh, Bobby says, when in doubt, dance it out and, <laughs> and, and yes. make it happen. So thank you all for being a part of the, the, the first part of this panel. I'm going to ask that uh, when you um, exit the screen that you totally exit uh, the uh, stream so that we can uh, put everybody on. So if you want, just say goodbye to everyone. All right, great. And then we're going to bring on the second panel in just a moment. So thank you, Trinity. Thank you, Tia. Thank you, Bobby. And thank you, Shanye. All right. Awesome. All right, Claudine. So that was great. It was a great yeah. panel. Trinity. Awesome. A group All of right. young people, beauty and brain. And I'm yeah. telling you, I'm really excited. That's the kind of thing that makes you excited about the future. You mm-hmm. know, it's like yep. if we leave it in the hands of those kids, we're going to be okay. I and, think so. Um, I, I, I really appreciate them being, you know, being honest about their opinion, honest about their feelings, but also giving such good advice. Yes. And so that's, that's really important. 
Absolutely. Um, Jared Wallace, thank you for watching. Yes, the future is bright. We really do appreciate it. Uh, so now we're going to bring on uh, the owners of uh, the Dreamer Apparel Collection. I have uh, English Garner and Anna Lizeth. How are y'all doing? Uh, you're, you're muted. Take, take it off mute. All right. How's it going, ladies? You're still on mute. Yeah, still muted. Okay, try now. Can you hear us now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. And we're going to um, want you to just talk a little bit about the Dreamer Apparel and what you have going on. And I'm proud to say that uh, my daughter, English, wave English, as if y'all can't tell who my daughter is. <laughs> She looks just like me, uh, is, is one of the owners and her partner, Anna Lizeth. Uh, they're doing some amazing things with the Dream of Apparel. And as you can see, they're wearing the signature T-shirt uh, and um, mm -hmm. apparel uh, as a part of their uh, first wave in the collection. So y'all want to talk a little bit about it? Um, we just started this as a way to basically let people know that art is more than a hobby. If you have art, put it out there. Do whatever you have to do to put it out there. Um, let people know that you actually have this talent because this is a talent where people aren't going to know it if you don't showcase it in some way. So we thought what better way to start putting her artwork, artwork out there than to put it on T-shirts. Everybody likes T-shirts. Everybody wants a nice T-shirt. So that was kind of the motivation for it all. Okay, awesome. So what do you have in your collection so far? Um, as of right now, we started off with the signature creator t-shirt, um, and which it features a little butterfly on the side. And basically it's just for anybody who creates anything. You could be an artist, you could be a barber. It doesn't matter. Um, and I've had a lot of people ask, you know, can men wear the t-shirt because it has the butterfly? Well, yes, they can. The butterfly just, it basically symbolizes transition and growth, uh, both within our brand and both within your life and your creativity of your brand or whatever you're creating. Mm -hmm. So um, you are, you, you, right now you just have uh, the t-shirts. What, what do you have available if people want to purchase uh, shirts from you or any of your merchandise? Um, like I said before, we have this uh, signature t-shirt. We also have our logo shirts. Um, we are uh, in the process of getting uh, hats made. Um, we have lighters, we'll have lanyards that'll be uh, delivered sometime this week. Um, we have buttons, so what else do we have? Um, long sleeves, stickers. I'm gonna need that yeah. long sleeve. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll um, have hoodies, uh, joggers, we'll have it all after a while, okay. so. All right, sounds good. So uh, they can find you on Instagram and you're also posting to Facebook. You have a website coming soon, is that correct? Yes, our website um, is May 11th. Yeah, May 11th. May 11th. Okay, launch May 11th. I like that. Yeah. All right, so great. Well, um, thank you, ladies, for joining us. And again, tell them how. Tell the viewers how you can, how they can actually get uh, a piece of apparel from the Creator line and or from the Dream Apparel line, and um, you know what they can do as far as paying for it. You ship. I know you that you, you can ship it yes. out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and talk about um, that. <laughs> as far as uh, getting uh, merchandise from us, either you can go to our Instagram page and uh, message us through the messenger. Um, be sure to include your address, all your good information, or you can just wait until May 11th. And um, whenever we post the link for our website, you can order through there. All right. Sounds good. Well, congratulations. I'm very proud of you. Um, you're definitely doing something big and, and I can't wait. I want my long sleeve. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And let us know, of course, uh, what other colors you have and uh, just keep doing big things. I think it's wonderful. Um, you know, black and brown business, young entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurship. Uh, what else we got going on here, Claudine? We got some of everything going I'm on. I'm telling you, just this is an international that, blend right here. Absolutely. <laughs> we, listen, going to make an impact in this world. Absolutely. Yes. I'm excited. And English, you know, mine is ordered. So uh, I need yes. to make <laughs> yeah. it happen. And, and of course, thank you to all the supporters, right, uh, English? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Everybody. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. And um, of course, uh, we're going to get back to the show and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch with you a little bit later to talk about some other things we may do a little bit later. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Okay, so I'm getting ready. Yes, yeah, so it is awesome. So I'm getting ready to add some more of our uh, panelists to the stream. We have, um, let's see. Yeah, I think everybody's here. Okay, so I see Christian, I see Harmony and Kendrell. Uh, Demia, I see, yeah, Demia looks like she's on, and then Anthony. Uh, got Anthony. Demia, I can see the light in your room if you want to know. Uh, Harmony, yeah, there's Kendrell. Okay. Yeah, turn, it's upside down. There you go. Okay, oh, now we're with Demia. Okay, and then Anthony. Uh, I don't know if he's still, okay, let me let him know that he is in. And then we'll go ahead, go ahead and get him started, Claudine. Okay, so first of all, we're excited to have such amazing young people on, beautiful, intelligent. And uh, of course the topic is uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus and how through the eyes of young people. And so the last group, what we talked about is your, we wanna talk about now your initial thought. COVID-19, coronavirus, I'm sure that, you know, with family members, you saw it on the news, you heard about it, but did y'all really think that it would get to the point that it would be so bad until we would have school closure for the remaining of the school year? Who wants to go first? I think I'm gonna go with Kristen. You wanna go first? Yeah, I'm with Kristen. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, I didn't think, I did and I didn't think it was gonna get as serious as it is now. And I did think that it was gonna get to the point where we were gonna be out of school. Cause of course, you know, this is something serious. It's not anything to play with. Right. Mm -hmm. But not to the extent it is now that we have now taken on the new norm. And um, I, I, I mean, if you ask anybody in my household, I don't like being home at all. Like I like to be at school and stuff. I like to be out and about, you know, I don't just like being in one place all the time. So. Gotcha. Okay. So Anthony, what's your take? Is Anthony in? What is your take on that? When you first heard about the coronavirus, COVID-19, did you thought we would be at this particular place we're at now in terms of people being quarantined, the fact that you can't interact, the socialization piece, and now school being closed? What's your take on that? Um, I really did not think it was going to get as bad as it is now. I just thought that it was going to be something kind of like how like all of the other semi-pandemic type thing or like, like the like Ebola and stuff like that like I, I really didn't think it was going to get to where we were out of school for the remainder of the year at least and that we weren't going to be able to go back okay all right is that Demia <clears throat> yeah Demia mm -hmm. what's your thought on that sweetie hello hello, hello Demia. all right what are your thoughts Hi. on the question Your thoughts on the um, question that Claudia asked? Think that it was mm -hmm. be, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be as serious. And I thought, like, it was just, like, a flu. But after a while, like, after everything started, like, uh, all the cases and the nurses were posting about all the clients and seeing what they were going through in the ICU and all that extra, um, I knew that it was for real. Okay. You know what, April, I want to backtrack and let the kids tell us a little bit about themselves. Yeah, I was just um, going to say that. Yeah, let, let's do that. So, Anthony, I'm going to begin with you. Tell our, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Anthony Mitchell, and I am a freshman at Anna High School. Okay. And I'm eight years old. Okay. Demia, a little bit about yourself. Demia, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm Demia, and I go to Helena Forest High School. I'm a senior. Okay. And I'm 17. All right. We're on you, Kristen. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm Kristen, of course, as you already know. Um, I am a sophomore in high school. I'm 15, and, you know, I'm good. Okay. You're sophomore. What was your school? Oh, um, Mary High School. Okay, awesome. Okay. All right. Okay, great. All right. And I, I guess Kendra, we'll get Kendrell and Harmony back on here in just a moment. I think they're working on the connection. So uh, we're going to ask you the, some of the questions that we asked the first panel as well. How do you think uh, our, our leaders are handling the situation? And if you were one of our leaders or you were leading the country or the state or the city or whatever, uh, you know, would you handle it the same way or are there things you do differently? Kristen? 
Okay, so me, I don't think they're really taking it as serious as they should. I really think that they're just taking it as, you know, like the game. And they're like, oh, well, you know, this will be over in a few, not really realizing, hey, this is going to be out for a few months. And not, you know, mentioning that they said it's going to be going in the summertime, kind of, sort of. But when the winter comes back, it's going to hit a little harder than it did before. So they're mm-hmm. not taking, I don't think they're taking it as serious because they're opening things back up. They're not supposed to, like, malls, the beach, you need to close those things down. Because if I was in charge, I would really just shut down everything. I would, you know, get certain people, I would test them. If they have it, you know, they'll go here. If you don't have it, you stay home. You you know, because that's the less risk of anybody else catching it. That's really what I think should happen. And I don't think they're taking it serious. Okay. Anthony, what are your thoughts? Anthony? Yes. Okay, what are your thoughts? Are you trying to get situated? It looks like you're moving through the house. Okay, so let me try and find me a good let me spot. Try, yeah, let me try a good spot. Some reception. He might need to keep trying. Anthony, mm-hmm. I think it's freezing it was, it was, Yeah, it was pretty good where you were. Oh, well. Well, that was quick. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Anthony? Okay, we'll go on to Demia. Demia, what are your thoughts? Um, I believe that they're doing the best that they can. And obviously something that they're doing is working because it's slowly ending. And um, I believe everybody will be going back to school in August the next year around because of the help that they're given and the support and stuff. Okay. All right. Anthony, you want to chime in on this? How do you think the leaders are doing? Can you hear me, Anthony? If you can hear us, give us a thumbs up, please. Okay. He's, he's going to work okay, out. We're going to move on and on. get him yeah. the opportunity to get himself <laughs> Exactly. So how, is, how has virtual learning been for you all? Well, for me, She freezing as well. Kristen, are you frozen as well? Okay. Yeah, Kristen's frozen. Okay, Demia, uh, how's virtual learning been for you? Um, it's kind of stressful. Uh, it's like well, sometimes wait, almost- you know, an hour or two before you know, um, they email back to let me know, hey, this is how you do it, and this is harder for me. Okay, Kristen, we lost the first part of your message because you were uh, your screen froze. So what did you say okay. in the beginning of Demia? We'll come back to you. Okay. Um, um, I think it's harder for me because um, me being a social person, I like to, you know, be in contact with my teacher and for them to be like, yeah, I want you to do it like this and show me and pinpoint everything for me. It's harder for me because sometimes you have to email and sometimes it'll take two, an hour or two for them to email back to let you know this is what you need to do. So it's harder for me. A little bit harder for you. A traditional learner, then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Demia, um, you can complete your thought now. Um, I believe that it's stressful a little bit because they give um a lot of work, more work than they were giving us when we were in school, and it's kind of hard to keep up with all the classes and remember when certain due dates are because not all of the due dates are the next day. Some of them you have a week to complete, like a test or something, and you can use notes and stuff. And then also, like, some of the notes are on Zoom, and sometimes you don't have the connection or the ability to get on at the time, so you don't get all the um, information needed. Okay, all right. Um, Anthony, you want to uh, chime in on this? How's the virtual learning been for you? And don't forget that you're muted. You're on mute. You need to unmute your mic. Anthony, unmute your mic. I don't think Anthony could hear us. Uh, yeah. Can you hear us, Anthony? I don't think he can hear us either. Okay. Okay. So All so right. we're gonna move on and then we'll come back to Anthony. Hopefully he'll have his um the connection right. But let's talk about um 
this has really been a challenging season for everybody, even adults. And I know as young people, I'm happy that we're giving you the opportunity to have the voice. But if you had to say, what has been the most frustrating thing about being quarantined, being in the house, not being able to uh, get out, not being able to, and I'm kind of telling you some things, I guess that's frustrating to me. So I'm normally, I like to be able to interact with other people, but for, for you, and I want to begin with you, uh, uh, Kristen, what has been the most frustrating thing that the uh, COVID-19 has brought on for you? Well, I mean, I guess the most frustrating is I don't really get to um, communicate with my friends like I want to, because, you know, now that you're home, some people take it as an opportunity to say, hey, now you can do all of this. You can clean up more. You can do more chores because you're not at school. And I think the, really the thing that's most frustrating to me is I like to watch TV. Mm -hmm. And now since I'm home every day, now I can't just, you know, come home and be like, okay, I got this on this time and I'm watching this at this time. Now I can see everything at the same time every day because it comes on, you know, every day. So I can see it. Now I can't be like, oh, I'm anxious to see this or that because now TV is boring. So I think that's the most frustrating thing to me. <laughs> right. Just being able to entertain yourself because Netflix, just, you know, you probably have seen everything on yeah. there probably. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Demir? What has been the most frustrating thing about being um, the uh, COVID-19 has brought? You have to unmute your mic, sweetie. Okay, Anthony, coming to you then. Can you hear us? I don't think you can. Okay. And yeah. Demir, we had Demir, okay? I guess you can't hear us. So you know what? That means that you might have to answer. You might have to keep answering, Kristen, until they get it together. And you go with that, right? Demir, can you hear us, yeah. darling? Okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to just go with Kristen for right okay. now. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, Kristen, um, I know you were talking about, um, you, you touched on the learning, um, the socialization, if, we, if you uh, kind of give us, giving us some idea of what you're doing uh, in terms of staying connected to your peers, how's that been for you? Yeah, it's, it's good and it's bad because, you know, um, not like we're going to school every day, we're seeing our people, our friends and every, um, everybody every day because, you know, you're going to school and now you're sitting at home Sometimes, like I said about the teachers, you text the person, you might have to wait 30 minutes, you might wait 40 minutes for they text back because, you know, people have to do stuff now. So it's that's also frustrating to me. So. Mm -hmm. One one of the, uh, the things that we've been talking about as far as the education piece is the technology piece. And that, I think that's a part of what's happening with this. Um, some of our panelists that they're having some technology issues because of a maybe a, um, a lack of strong internet connection or, you know, other reasons, you know, other reasons that are related to technology. Uh, Kristen, you're in Marion County. How has this been for you as far as being able to do the virtual learning piece? Have you, do you all have strong internet connections and, and technology that, that allows you to do it? We do. And it's like, well, I think what it is, is um, all of us being on the Wi-Fi and internet at one time, kind of corrupt it because you know it's trying to go here for you and it's trying to go here for you and meet and here for me so it's, it's kind of harder so mm -hmm. sometimes it's slow sometimes it's fast but you know it jumps and sometimes it'll slow down so it's it's hard and easy kind of sort of okay but but you do believe it's necessary for your peers to make sure they stay on top of it either way i mean to make sure yes, they interact with the teachers and and contact them if they have any problems Yes, ma'am. I think even because, you know, cause they give you an email and they give you their number. So if right. their email doesn't work, you call them and let them know, hey, um, this is going on. I can't get to do this. So can you just walk through it and I'll do it on paper? OK. And so I, I want to ask, uh, we didn't we didn't get to ask the other group, but when you think of COVID-19, the coronavirus, if I would say to you, uh, Kristen, this, give me a description of this thing in one word. What would be your description? Dangerous. Mm, that's a good word. That is a good word. And you want to kind of like a spawn upon that a little bit? Well, let's, first, let's, see. Let's, see not, let's see whether or not let's see whether not Kendrell. Can you hear us, Kendrell? Can you hear us? He's talking, but we can't. Hear. Okay, you're you're muted. I, I I don't know if you can hear us or not. It doesn't look like you can. It looks like he's yeah. looking somewhere else. Okay, go ahead, Christian. Um to elaborate on it, um, 
it's dangerous because it's spreading just that quick like that. And when I look at the news, even though I don't, when I do look at the news, I can see where they're making a prediction of every week. Oh, this is going to happen. And this is how many cases we're going to have this week. And next week we're going to have this many cases. So it's dangerous. And I also heard that um, the man said in the bathroom, he said, if you have the coronavirus and you don't know it, just by using the blow dryer for your hands in the bathroom can spread it just that quick. So it's very dangerous. And I think people should really be taking it more serious than they are because people are partying and stuff. They're not saying, oh, because well, this because we're out of school now, we're out of work. If you're not essential workers, you're out of work. So they're like, oh, this is an opportunity. We can, you know, have fun. But yeah. it's really not. It's very dangerous. And that's what I was going to ask you, your mm -hmm. peers. And we have to ask Dr. MacGyver about that, April, about the blow dry. She just said that somebody said uh -huh. that using the blow dry spread. So we'll have to definitely <laughs> ask about that. Well, um, you know, they were saying some bad things about the blow dryer before coronavirus. Right, right. <laughs> it spreads so, things. So yeah. th that's that's the piece that I wanted to talk about a little bit more in terms of, I mean, uh, as adults, April and I were talking about the fact we don't even like going to the grocery stores. And I really don't. I, I absolutely don't. But um, your peers, the you know, your generation, do you believe that um, the what what is the reason why they don't really know how serious or how uh, deadly this thing could be? Because again, like we said in the first segment, when you can begin to put names and faces with the people that have lost their lives from this thing, then it hits a little bit different. And so what would it take for people your age to understand that this is nothing to play with? Well, I, want, I don't want to really say it how I'm going to say it. I'm not trying to say... Um, I'm just when I say this, I'm not trying to take it in any bad way. I think really they need someone that they know or love or trust, you know, someone that they really know needs to like not needs to, but might have it. And then they get tested positive and then they're like, oh, wow. And I was just with you last week or I was just talking to you and you have it now. And I'm like, OK, so now this is enough to play with because if it was over here last week and now it's, now you got it, it's like okay, now I need to stop, you know, playing. I need to start taking it more serious. Wow. Yeah, I pray that it doesn't come to that point, though. Mm -hmm. I pray that yeah. take somebody That's why they want to it. it. I understand what you're saying, though. That makes sense. But I'm praying that they will understand. It doesn't it don't have to take that for them to know that the coronavirus can be deadly if you don't take the proper precautions. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got Anthony back on. Can you hear us now, Anthony? Demia, can you hear us? Okay, so we still don't have good. Okay, all right. Yeah, Demia, uh, answer that question as well. What do you, What do you think is going to take for uh, young people your age to uh, start taking the coronavirus seriously? Demia, she put the thumbs up that she could hear us, but. All right, looks like we are, we're, we're just about losing everybody on the stream right now. I don't know what's going on. It may, maybe it's the weather for some people. Um, Kristen and I are still kind of hanging out. So let's let's go with it, Kristen. Even uh, Claudine is frozen. <laughs> Claudine is now yeah, frozen well, from the stream. Yeah. yeah. Well. All right. So um, what are your concerns about the future? You know, and um, what do you think is going to happen? Uh well, how do you think it's going to impact the future of not just your generation, but everyone? What do you what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's going to it's going to be a bad impact because, you know, there's a lot of children. My you know, they're my generation. We're young people, of course. And then but still now to this day, there's still people having babies, you know, people, and people have babies every day. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be bad for them because what if they are born and then they might test positive that they have it. So they don't get to live the life that they want to live because of this happening so i think there's bad impact and especially on my generation because there's a lot of young people even though they say you know young people couldn't really catch it and die like that there's still a lot of young people you know catching it and they're passing away so mm -hmm. i think it's a bad impact and for the future i'm just hoping that it you know it um it comes to an end they find a cure for it and that they cure everybody that's just what i think is happening i hope okay um, I know when you and I were talking the other night during the prep call, um, you know, you made a reference to, um, you know, your the, the spiritual side of things and, you know, what you believe as far as what we all need to do and think about 
uh, to get through this. So what are your thoughts from a spiritual standpoint? Well, I think everyone just needs to, um, they need to, everybody just needs to come inside, you know, like, you know, some people, when they started, some people just started praying just when they heard it, they were like, they just started praying just like that. And I think everybody needs to come and just pray that everybody needs to come pray together and, you know, pray for a better ending and, you know, the future. And I think really, I really, really think that everybody should just really needs to go in the house and stop going out. Cause like you were saying, we were saying earlier, people still going out partying they're not taking it seriously. And I don't, I don't like that. Cause my mom, I'm still in the house. If I go out the door, she probably call me like, get back in this house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, somebody needs to mute their mic. We hear a lot of background noise. Um, <clears throat> Well, Kristen, um, it looks like the studio wasn't kind to our other guests, so we're going to uh, kind of wrap this up. Uh, okay. What do you want your teachers, parents, and school administrators to know about your perspective on uh, the coronavirus? And, and what words of encouragement can, can you lend to uh, everyone in your peer group who may be watching? Well, I think everyone needs to because me being young you know not a lot of people listen to young people but um stay in the house don't be on out on the streets unless you have a mask on if you go somewhere keep hand sanitizer in your car have your mask on at all times when you get home wash your hands change your clothes you know and be careful with what you do and just when if you if you do go out to you know um Fast food places to the drive through. Just pray over your food and say, God, please don't. That's right. The people don't that, 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 the people that, food. that, no, yeah, the people that, that food person. do not have it. Yeah, <laughs> I, so. I, I, hey, listen, mm-hmm. April, as much as I like to eat, that was really good advice. Oh, that was some real stuff right there. Yeah. So, but, you know, before before we leave there, can we ask her, like, because we know as adults, we go through like the seasons where it's like if you watch it too much, you become, oh, you really become overwhelmed. So what is the thing that you have found that has been really therapeutic for you that gets your mind off of all that's going on and it puts you in a really good, happy place? Uh, I can't really say what well, I think. I just, I don't really know because me, I drift off a lot and I be thinking about a lot of stuff a lot. So, I mean, just think about, just find your happy place. Just, you know, I just go in my room, sit down, you know, when I drift off, find my happy place. Just think about, you know, the birds or, you know, something that you like. Just the birds. Yeah. <laughs> the birds Listen, you know. This pandemic got us think about the birds for a little simple <laughs> stuff that we took for granted before. You know what? I'm feeling every bit of that. Even that when you go outside, it's like, wow, I've never realized how mm-hmm. beautiful nature was. Yeah. So that mm-hmm. that's, that's true. That is really yeah. true. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we take a lot for granted and, and we, we should take this time to just, you know, embrace and absorb some of the things that we walk past every single day and ignore, whether it's intentionally or not. So you're absolutely right, Kristen. Um, and it, you know what? You're a trooper. You held it down yeah. for the second girl group. That's <laughs> what <laughs> that's that's right. Right. <laughs> what kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. <laughs> I know that's down. right. Thank you and so much. Tell us about you again. What school are you? I'm from Marion High School. Marion High School. Shout out to yes, everybody sir. in Marion. Marion, <laughs> yes. yeah. Marion High School. What are y'all? The Swamp Foxes? What are y'all? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I got that right. The Swamp Foxes. Wow. They got a good Thank athletes in, uh, in, in Marion. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So. Um, but thank you so much, Christian, for uh, for joining us, and uh, we really do appreciate you being a part of this panel, representing Marion County, uh, representing your family. Well, you want to give a shout out to anybody? You get the you get the shout out. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the last um, one. Get- mom and dad, I know you're watching, so shout out to y'all. Shout out okay. to of course. Uh, what's your mom and dad? Right? You got to call their names. You got to call that's names. right. Lucinda and Kim. I know y'all watching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, so, you have a brother who's graduating, right? Yes, ma'am, I do. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's not really liking me either because, you know, his whole, you know, year, yeah. school year, rest of school year is um, thrown at the window because, you know, mm-hmm. he does his sports and things. And, you know, he was probably going to get um, his little, what is it called? The little um, plaque thing for mm-hmm. um, being mm-hmm. one of the best, you know. MVP um, award. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. You'll still mm-hmm. get it. Yeah, I'm gonna have my people to call his people. We'll there you go, people. Claudine is the yeah. he's the plug. She's she the one that, 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 that,
I, I, I want to give a special shout out to Alexia Mills, Charlotte, North Carolina. Lexi, okay. what's up, girl? Thank you for watching. You know, I love you and uh, keep being the great kid that you are. I hope that everything is working out for you. And uh, we, we, we're going to survive COVID land. Absolutely. Cheryl, Cheryl yeah. Adamson calls this COVID land. That's what we're, that sounds like it should be on Netflix or something. Yeah. Uh, we but, uh, this land. We're going to survive yeah, it. We, we're going to survive it. And, and thank you so much, Christian, for your insight today. Thank you to all of our viewers for, yeah. for watching today. Really do appreciate it. We just want to give the young people a platform to talk about their feelings and, um, you know, to let us know what's going on, what they need. So continue to support your young people, parents, uh, you know, just be patient. Like, like someone said, just breathe, take it all in, do what you have to do. And teachers, you're doing a phenomenal job making sure cool. they have the materials that they need. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you're definitely uh, our heroes. And if yeah. there are any frontliners who are watching, uh, just please continue to do what you're doing to keep us safe. So Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, someone asked if this broadcast was going to be available later. It's always posted to the Facebook pages. Uh, if you're a member of the network, you should be able to go back and see it. Uh, and of course, for my personal page, it's also posted to the Whittemore Community Magazine's page and uh, Horry County Black United. You should be able to see it there. So, Claudine, thank you so much for yeah. holding it down with me. I really thank appreciate you. it. And we're going to do more. We, oh, I she got said you. one more thing. Oh, one, one more thing. thing. Go ahead. I Go can, ahead. I can hear my brother in the background. Um, shout out to you too, Kenneth. I know you listening. <laughs> <laughs> you listening shout she listening. She's out. I got you. The last <laughs> that was on. going to give my brother a shout out. There you <laughs> go. All right. Well, well, thank you so much, Kristen. You guys take care. And to our listeners, stay safe. Amen. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Bless you.